This is Kathy from Gadgets Top 321, and in today's video, I'm going to be taking a look at Kobe number 54, Goshiki Yama Ochre. I'll test it in a variety of pins and nib sizes, ranging from a Pilot Extra Fine to a 1.5 stub nib, and I'll also give it a test in my glass dip pin. I'm going to begin with the dip pin, and this is a pretty low saturation ink so I don't have very high hopes for it performing well but you never know till you try that was unexpected oh. I didn't clean the nib Okay, a word of warning. Do not forget to wash off your dip pen after you use it. I used it for a previous ink and then I dipped it in this pale ink. So, I I don't know how bad this is going to be contaminated. I I went and washed wash this off. I'll go ahead and test it with the glass dip pen, but these pens have already been dipped, so I won't have to re-dip them for this writing sample, but I'm curious to see if this is noticeably contaminated from dipping a dirty glass pen in it. This ink does come off the nib rather quickly. You can tell it's getting pale rather quickly. I don't know yet if, um, I can't, can't really tell if it's been contaminated. Let's see what it looks like compared to the fountain pens. I'm going to work backwards this time so that I can see a, a larger sample of ink beside this dip pen writing sample. I'm going to start with the wider nibs first. I'm going to begin with the Jinhao X750 with a 1.5 stub nib. It is dry. And I experience this with other nibs as well. It's it's tough to get the ink to grab the paper and start writing. Okay, and I don't know if you can see, when I do the ink smear, it's the X, it looks like a pink component of the ink, and the smeared ink looks like a pale orange. So this is a, a pinky orange ink. And the in writing samples I've done on other papers with my Stargazer with a medium nib, kind of out of the ordinary, I have trouble getting the ink to grab the paper with this one also. This is just a, it's a strange writing experience. It's an unusual writing experience with this ink. It's, I don't know, it wasn't pleasant. It's hard to describe. It was smooth, but it felt like it wasn't grabbing the paper, almost like this pen has baby's bottom, but, or it's over polished, but I've never had that experience with this nib before. I'm just going to put a sad face. It just, it wasn't pleasant. It's hard to pinpoint exactly what's wrong. Well, I think what's wrong is that ink is just having trouble grabbing the paper. And that sensation is feels even worse because it's a, a pale colored ink. Okay, next is 
a platinum 3776 with a medium nib. Feels very dry. I think it is dry. There's not a lot of ink being put on the page. Yeah. Dry. And I've it's been the same experience with all the other papers. This is this ink just doesn't feel pleasant. This is a Twisby Mini with a fine nib. I spelled that wrong. There's not supposed to be an I in there in the middle. Now, this this pen felt really dry, but you can see there's a decent ink smear, smear there. This ink may not necessarily be dry, but it, it just feels dry. And that's that's something you experience quite often with these undersaturated inks. Next, I've got my Caveco Skyline Sport with an extra fine nib. Yeah, unpleasant. Dry. It's unfortunate that this ink is so dry. It's a nice match for my Sailor Le Cool. This is has a medium fine nib. This is the um quartz finish. Yeah, it looks like there's hardly any ink being deposited on the page, but it's just because the ink is so pale and it feels dry again. I prefer to go in the other direction from the finer nibs to the broader nibs because the writing experience tends to get better, more enjoyable. That's why I usually do it in that order because this is not pleasant. This is a Pilot 78G with the extra fine nib. G+. Plus. Dry. All right, while this dries, I'll take a look at the other writing samples. This is Tomoe River paper in a Hobonichi Weeks, the back of a Hobonichi Weeks the note paper. This is Rhodia, and everything just felt dry. The 3776, it was okay. It was tolerable, but not pleasant. The Pilot Stargazer was smooth. In fact, it was almost unpleasantly smooth and it's decently legible but it's just because you're looking at it up against all these pretty unlegible writing samples but if you've used very many undersaturated inks you've probably experienced this before it's it's so smooth that it's like dragging the ink along and you end up with some some areas that are just too pale, like this G is paler and the E is paler, where it's almost like shading, but instead of having shading in each letter, some entire letters are pale and some entire letters are dark. It's it's a weirdly unpleasant experience. Now the stub nib, it looked kind of okay. It wasn't bad. It's pretty opaque and legible. On 20 pound copy paper, every, well, these, these writing samples, the ones that say nice, they felt nice, but I just don't think they look nice. They felt comfortable. This is a weird color. I don't know really why you would want to use this other than maybe some art, artistic project. Um, 
the stargazer was too wet. I just, I wasn't fond of it. The bleed through is not bad. Let's see. It doesn't really spread that much, but it's a, it's an ink. It's not really feathering. It just looks grainy on the paper. And, you know, you have the dots of darker, spots of darker ink that I just don't think looks that great. My Leutch term. It was an interesting looking color. Nice and opaque. Um, not so much shading as kind of um, a halo to the letters. You can kind of see on the O there. And I think that's where you can see see how the X is pink and the orange is what rubs away. You kind of see that in the these wider lines. You see pink in the middle and orange, like a crust of orange around the letters. It's an interesting look. Um, but I have to say, when I was doing these writing samples on other papers, when it was time to go from one paper to the next, I usually I look forward to it. I'm like looking for different types of paper to write on to see how it feels. With this ink, I was just dreading it. And people have asked, why do you even get ink samples of this undersaturated inks that you think you're not going to like. Some of these, they're pretty. The colors are pretty. And I think the ink swatch that I was looking at when I was buying ink samples, this must have had a pretty ink swatch. And I, I just wanted to try it out. It's usually fun to try. And yeah, you can see this sample of ink is now contaminated, which I don't mind. It wasn't a pleasant ink to use to begin with. But these are not the, the fountain pen samples are not contaminated. This is a true sample. Just not fun to use. Don't know what else to say about it. All right. If you found this video helpful, please give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel.